I am Stacey A. Cross, and there is no E in my name, and I'm here again, once again, with another comfort killer. His name is Corey Thompson. Corey, how are you today? I'm awesome. How are you? I am fat freaking, let's see, let me see how many I can say. I'm spectacular, I'm fantastic, I'm enthusiastic, I'm alive. Awesome, awesome. So Corey, man, you made 30K a month at your J-O-B, and you know what, that's just over broke, and 30K, they will say it's freaking, it's, what is it, it's um, four. Right, right. 30K a month at the job? Job, yes. Yes. No, no, that, wait, wait, a month? I thought you said a year. I don't know, no. What, what J-O-B did that for you in a month? I drilled oil wells. It's not a very popular uh, uh, thing to talk about, but uh, yeah, I drilled oil wells for uh, a lot of different oil companies. And uh, anyways, from the time I was 26 to the time I was 31, I made 30K a month. Uh, thereabouts working 14 days out of the month. Worked half the we need to do a whole we need to do a whole show on what you did so you can give people 30k a month because that's fantastic. I misread that comfort killers. I thought this kid said a year. No, 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 a month. But then um, but then but then what happened? You got fired, you got laid off? I got laid off. Uh, commodity prices sunk down, you know, price of oil went from 80 90 dollars a barrel down to 30 40 and uh, the company I was working for went bankrupt and that was it, you know. I never thought I'd find myself out of a job, but I was out of a job. Um, I was looking at going to work overseas, which is in the Middle East, and it's not very friendly over there. So uh, I was just kind of weighing my options when a friend of mine reached out to me and said, hey, come to this networking event with me. I'm thinking about buying some rent houses. And I said, all right, I'll come down there and see what's up. And so, so pretty much, uh, you know, I'm just trying to still grasp it. Okay, so 30K a month, did you save any? Did you, what, what did you do with that money? Were you flat broke? Did you go back to zero? I don't know. I, I owned a house in 32 acres outright. Um, I owned all of my vehicles, which I had a lot of them because, you know, I was young, done with my money. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a house in 60 acres with a mortgage on it, but I only financed it for 10 years. So I was paying $2,100 a month. Uh, just to live there. So, you know, that was a that was a huge burden when you don't have any money coming in. And I had about a quarter million dollars saved up. Okay. Uh, a fund, which, which could have, you know, I could have sat at home for years uh, and spent that money and worked a normal job um, and, and still paid that mortgage and still live that lifestyle. But, uh, you know, whenever I'm in the real estate, it's the 30K appetite. That, that made me successful, nothing else, because I was trying to make 30K a month in real estate while everybody else was telling me, no, that's, that's really not possible. And you already kind of, you, you kind of had your taste buds already set with the 30K a month. So you came in this new thing and said, you know what? I'm gonna just make 30K a month. People are now turning to you and said, that's impossible. You're like, well, I already tasted that. So nothing's impossible. So you go to the seminar, you go with the buddy of yours. Tell me what happens next of this thing and, and they tell us they tell us basically um there's private lenders out there that will loan you based on an asset and they'll give you up to 70 percent of what a house is worth uh the entire funds um and all you have to do is is be able to prove that that's what the house is worth you do that with the cma and i thought i don't hang out with 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 crackheads that often but you know if they're gonna if they're gonna give me 70 percent of what a house is worth on my name I'm going to go see what this is about. So when we walked outside of that meeting, I asked my partner, I said, Hey, are we going to do this or we're not going to do it? And he said, yeah, I've got this much money. And I said, well, I'll put this much money in. Let's go see what trouble we can get in. And the next week I attended an auction, a tax auction. Mm -hmm. I met an investor. He showed me two houses. He was there to look at. Um, one of them had some dead cats in it. And, but other than that, I was like, man, somebody can move right in here. I get these dead cats out and Man, that's a perfect house, you know what I mean? And he's sitting in there going, you're crazy. There's no way I'm going to buy this house. It's in a bad neighborhood. It's, you know, doesn't check any of the boxes. I'm like, it's $12,000. There's not a $12,000 bad house on planet Earth. Mm. I'm buying this house. So uh, we bought that house. Uh, we put another one. Uh, we bought it off auction.com. And then I got on Craigslist one day, and this guy said, hey, I'm, I'm trying to sell my, my $100,000 house for $47,000. But I didn't know how to tell if his house was worth 100000 So I just went up and bought it, too. I figured, 
you know, worst case scenario on all these houses, we'll just have to rent them out. Even though I didn't understand why that was beneficial at the time, um, we just went and bought them. And, and we could have lost our, our entire shirt on this because I had no knowledge in real estate. I'd never read a real estate book. Mm. I'd never read a podcast. Um, the only thing I was doing was looking at the tax value saying, you know, if, if it's worth that on the tax value, then, then I should buy it because I think I can sell it for more than that. And that's not a way to go about real estate. I don't, I don't recommend people do that. Um, the reason why I was able to do that is because I had the money, you know, um, but we went and did it and we made, you know, we made 17,000 on one of them. We made, uh, you know, 15,000 on another and we we actually got 25,000 down for the little $12,000 house with, with the cats in it. We only had 23,000 in it. Somebody gave us $25,000 as a down payment and yeah. we're carrying on it. And that ended up being a, a sign like, uh, from, you know, I don't know, like, it, it's like, this is what you need to be doing. You're, you're printing money. You're only getting, you get $216 a month, but you don't have a dollar invested in it. So anyways, that's a little bit of foreshadowing for what's coming, but you know, that's how we got started. And you know, it was, it was definitely trying. Um, and, and during that, uh, one of those houses, by the way, was 150 miles from my house. Mm. So if you go to real estate books, that one's definitely not in there. They won't tell you go buy a house that's two hours away and, and then manage a, a rehab and flip from two hours away. Uh, but during that time period, when I was driving back and forth, uh, a friend of mine, my partner, uh, told me about the Bigger Pockets podcast. And that's where yeah. I ran it home. And when I listened to him, he had that South Louisiana accent, you know, and I really related to that. And this guy was, I mean, he was just spitting truth. You know what I mean? Everything he was saying, I was like, you know, this is my life. Like everything is 10 times harder than it's going to be. So it's going to take 10 times the work. Mm -hmm. So I bought the next rule and it was like, you know, I've been living by that philosophy my whole life. I just didn't know it. You know, right. I never high school. And now here I am listening to Grant Cardone as I'm driving back forth to this rehab and he's just validating what I'm already doing. You know what I mean? Take massive action. Do everything. Uh, everything's going to take 10 times the work, so you're going to have to put 10 times the effort in. Everything he's saying is like, yes, this is exactly right because, I mean, here's what am I doing? You know what I mean? I got laid off from, from working in oil field. I had no background in construction. And now uh, I'm remodeling houses, and I don't even know. I don't have a real estate license or anything. So – you know, everything that he said and the biggest thing that stuck out to me on that podcast was commit first and figure the rest out later. And without knowing that at the time, I'd already done it. And, and it's a great philosophy to live by. And it's, and it's helped us build a, a very, very good business and a very strong business. Well, you know what? Um, you, so there's a couple of things that you, there's a theme here with you. Is that you go in head first, you go in head first, you ask questions later, you take massive risks. And you take massive action and you don't even know, like you said, no real estate license. You didn't listen to a podcast. You didn't read a book. You just went in head first and you kind of took your energy with you and it worked, right? You don't recommend it for people, but then on the other side, people has been reading for years and trying to study it and trying to perfect it before even taking action. So I appreciate that side of it to show comfort killers that yes, it is true. I listen to the podcast that you you uh you're referencing with Grant Cardone on Bigger Pockets. You know what's so funny is that the hosts of those podcasts were like they were kind of like no, that's not the way. But and he kept going in. No, this this, this is the way. You go in and you ask questions later. You commit first and just figure it out. Um, so I'm glad that you had that philosophy already embedded. In you. Everything that Grant Cardone teaches us, the real 10Xers, the real comfort killers, they already been doing it. They just got it validated now. Right, right. And, that, and, that, and that's the biggest thing. It's like he says it all the time. I'm giving you permission to go be great. I'm giving you permission because everybody will tell you. I mean, everybody in my life at that time was saying, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Don't do this. You know what I mean? Don't do it. You're gambling. You know, all of these different things that they would say. And I'm like, look, this is going to work and it's going to work great. And at that time it was about flipping houses. You know what I mean? I didn't have a, a educational money. You know what I mean? They don't teach that in school. Uh, my dad grew up in the middle class. You know what I mean? He didn't have an educational money. So as, as I dove further into Grant Cardone and the people, you know, all of a sudden my Facebook goes from, you know, just the people I went to high school with and stuff like that. Now I've got, you know, strangers at me, 
But I go and look at the friends list. I'm like, oh, well, they're friends with somebody that I met on Brett Cardone Street. You know what I mean? So I accept their friend request, and then the content that they're putting out is just motivating me that much more to go take that much more action. And not that it's not that it's competitive, but it's like, hey, look, you know, we're all doing different things. My man Ron Peppy is he's he's from Indiana. You know what I mean? But I watch his live streams every morning and get it motivation from him. Uh, you know, Dale Childress Jr. I've never met Dale Childress Jr., but I, but I love his content and I watch it and I and you know I, I share it and I like it because it gets me amped up. And while we're in completely different businesses with different philosophies and everything else, everybody that's in that group will, if you're down or having a bad day or you got your butt kicked the day before, you jump on a stream or something, you're going to get amped up and ready to go. Mm-hmm. So as we continue down this rabbit hole, it just gets better. You know what I mean? Um, you know. During that time period, we ended up buying a house and we just bought it and then resold it. We didn't have to do any work to it. And we made $27,000, but in reality, we made a lot more on that deal because it, it ran us across an attorney's desk and he saw my phone number and realized I was from College Station, uh, that I'd spent some time there. So he reached out to me and he, and, and he tells me about this, this way that you can buy a house with somebody else's mortgage still in place. Mm. So you're taking over their payments and the house gets deeded to you. So he, he gives me an hour rundown on it and I blow him off. I tell him, thanks, but no thanks. I'm good. I'm a house flipper. I'm going to make 30,000 a month. I'm good. Don't worry about me. I don't need all that, that, that passive income, that stuff's for the birds. And uh, anyway, <laughs> a partner, uh, you know, I said, Hey, this guy named Scott Horn reached out to me. He said, who? And I said, Scott Horn. He goes, that's one of the largest real estate attorneys in Texas. Wow. Really? He goes, yeah, he's, you know, he's done podcasts. He's done this. You know, he's got over 10,000 owner finance transactions under his belt. He's loaned over $400 million. You know what I mean? He's big time. And he called your phone and said, I said, yeah. He goes, do you still have his number? I'm like, no, I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. He's like, Back. Like right now, call him back. And I'm like, I don't have his number. I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I just kind of blew him off. He's like, you've got to, you've got to get back in front of him. I said, well, if he's just big time, we'll be able to find him, you know? So we Google him, we get his, his, his business address. But I knew at that point in time, if I didn't have a deal, if I wasn't bringing something of substance, he probably wasn't going to talk to me. Cause I mean, every attorney I've ran across is a 10 Xer in their own way. You know, it's just a, a little bit different, different mentality. They're all a little bit more subtle, but this guy does massive amount of deals. So we get a deal together down in College Station. We bring it back to him. We execute that deal. So we took over this lady's payments, got her out of foreclosure, um, caught her mortgage up. We got $15,000 down on that deal, which reimbursed us for the amount that we had to catch her mortgage up. And then we wrapped her mortgage in a, in a wrap transaction. Now we've been making $300 a month off that deal every month. It's called sub two owner finance, but he helped us do it. And then during that transaction, he felt that energy and that, that everything that I bring to the table. And he's like, Hey, I got this, you know, I want to, you know, here's how you do it a little more. I'm going to come down to Waco on such and such date, get some of your friends. I want to personally teach y'all. So he came down and taught four of us um, how to execute this deal. And it was like, I mean, it completely changed our business, but he didn't do it for the money because we didn't pay him very much. You know what I mean? We basically fell room and all that sort of thing. He did it because he knew we could bring a massive amount of deals because we were, we were movers. We were action takers. We were people that he wanted to be around. And now we're actually partners with him on his owner finance Academy as, as we go out and we do speaking events and try to try to talk about doing it. But these deals right here are what got us through the winter time because when winter time got here, you couldn't sell anything. Mm. Nope find anything, uh, especially in the, in the house business, everybody's on, on Thanksgiving, they're on Christmas, their problems are, are, are off to the side. They're not worried about selling their house. They're not worried that they're behind on their mortgage. Um, it's like, it's like post apocalypse living in the, in the real estate investing world during, during the, the holiday season, because you just, you know, as much as you hustle, like I spent the, I went out the Wednesday before Thanksgiving all night long and I put out signs to say I buy houses and all of these retail shopping centers because I knew Black Friday shoppers were going out. You know, I knew there was going to be this massive, you know, traffic and people were going to be fighting over TVs and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I put out a thousand signs in all these different places. I got like four calls, wow. you know, 
every, every, every hundred signs you put out, you buy at least one house. So I was planning on buying 10 houses. I got four calls and I'm thinking, well, the city must've came through and picked up my signs, but I drove back by and they were all still there. It's just people were in like a, like a holiday coma, you know, their, their problems don't exist during right. Christmas. No, 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 that makes, that makes sense. And you know, I always see those signs and I'm like, do, 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 do they work? You know, and obviously uh, they do, somehow they do work. So what I love about what you said here was that you got laid off and then all of a sudden you took action and then you're meeting different people throughout your life that's kind of pivoting you to what you really want to do. And it says here, you're currently focused on stopping foreclosures and helping people owner fin uh, finance their homes, which is a huge deal. It's just now, it's, it's moved away from you and it's like helping people now in the universe and helping people want to stay in their home. I'm sure that's a big deal to you. And you're doing that every day by partnering with this lawyer, huge attorney. Now, now, passive income has been important to you. Before you were like, you, you, you brushed it off, Corey. You're like, man, that's for wussy. That's for freaking clowns. You're about to flip homes and keep it moving like a drone. So where are you now in your passive income uh, business? And so you just purchased that office. You're just leasing an office space now. So you're obviously growing. Where are you now in your business? Right now in my business, uh, we're building a print shop. So um, we write letters to people that say we want to buy your house. And, you know, most people, whenever you get mail, spam mail, where does it go? Trash, baby. The trash. But if it's handwritten, if, if, you, if it's a handwritten address on there, somebody's going to open that letter. And so we're short, sweet, to the point. Uh, we're getting a, a – we rented this office. We're getting envelope stuffers. We're getting handwriting uh, machines that will handwrite our letters so we can do a thousand mailers a week um, out of this office that's that's what we're wanting to do we're, we're staging up our marketing now because we have the connections to be able to, to help a massive amount of people so we need to get that information in front of them uh, the other thing is we pull our own list so we know exactly how to find the foreclosures before they ever show up at the courthouse so um, we're doing that and and you know, we've had a bunch of private money thrown at us. We we had a guy offer us a million dollars. Uh, he was just going to loan us a million dollars at like 7% interest to go out and do this over a year ago. And we turned that down because we were like, you know, I mean, Matt Monero, I don't know if you met him at 10X Growth Con. Yep, yep. No, Matt. He's a good guy. Yep. I wish I had been, been following Matt before this guy came in with the million because – you know, at, at the time, a million dollars was inconceivable to me. I didn't want to be responsible for your million. You know, I wanted to be responsible for my million, but not yours. I, you know, so when this man, he's like 74 years old, he's like, hey, this could be a beautiful partnership. You know, let's sit down, eat lunch, let's do this. And I was like, man, thanks, but no thanks, because I didn't want to be responsible for his million. Now I know exactly what to do with that million. And again, you know, that opportunity is not there. But, you know, if I'd have been listening to Matt Monero, if, I, if I'd have ran across him sooner, our business would be already be to a completely different level. But yeah. right now where we're at, we have, uh, I mean, we have a massive amount of private investors that we work with. Um, we, st we do owner finance, stop foreclosures. Uh, we still buy rental properties because they're great, great assets. You know, yeah. I mean, can't go wrong with them. Um, and then we still do flips because – we're full time, you know what I mean? So the passive income right now, we're, we're up to a level of passive income where we've got a nice little check coming in. Yeah. It's not enough because we can't grow. We can't hire with that money right now. You know what I mean? We can't hire. So we're dependent upon going out and doing a flip and making $30,000 um, to be able to hire and stage up. So the printing company is one thing that we're doing to get the income coming in. The uh, helping Scott with the Owner Finance Academy, going out and teaching and recruiting and doing all those things, yeah. is something to get our, our income up. And then, uh, of course, everything else we do with our flips and our rentals and everything that we do to acquire real estate, we're just taking all the money from over here and going and do those things over there. So it's kind of a, a beautiful thing where it's gone. But, you know, at the time, it was like, we're just going to help my friend buy some rent houses. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> what I'm saying and I love the flourish I love how things grow man I love how you you put it down I love the fact that you need to stage up your marketing so you went ahead and got a printing company now are you are you outsourcing that to other other businesses that need printing jobs we're gonna we're gonna as soon as we get set up as soon as we get all of our equipment set up and we trial run it with us you know what I mean we get efficient at it we get 
are five or six people in here that know how to do it. Yeah. And we're, yes, we're going, to, we're going to take on as many, as many uh, other people's marketing as we can, because, you know, we'll, we'll grow that thing into, you know, 40, 50 employees. If, 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 if we're able to, if we're able to execute it, absolutely. But I don't want to, you know, it's like right now, if I told you I could do a hundred thousand mailers a week, uh, I believe I can, but do I want to right now? Probably not. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. And yeah, you're doing it the right way, man. So what one thing too that struck me is you're crazy right now, making you a comfort killer. You said here, you got no girlfriends, man. Girlfriend don't grind, yo. It's like no TV. Um, your RVs are time vampires, and you live live less than one thousand a month with custody of your three-year-old daughter, man. So how are you putting that in notion? I, I know some people, some girls, some female comfort killers that'll be like, what are you talking about, man? I'm a girl. I rock it. I rock and roll. Why you, man? Why now in your time that you're like, you know, I got to cut this? Well, it's kind of funny because, because I've been the same person my whole life. You know, I didn't get to $30,000 a month at my job by not taking action. You know what I mean? I was, I was working a position at 26 that most people never got to work until they were 50. So... Um, I, I was always, uh, always, always like, you know what, I'll find time for that later. Um, you know, I actually did uh, three, my, the mother of my child, you know, I, I love the mother of my child more than anybody else in the world. And that's kind of why I haven't kept a girlfriend around because, you know, I've always had faith in her. Now, since, since I did this, now this is, this is breaking news. This is right now. Me and <laughs> have actually, you know, decided to work on things because it was something that, that we were going through, that we were growing in different directions yeah. and had a conversation about our daughter and we decided, hey, you know, she wants to get her real estate license. I'm like, there's room in the business for a real estate agent, but here's the deal. We're going to live in an RV and we're going to grind it out. So she's on board 100%. Our goals are going in the same direction. Um, you know, it took a lot to get it there. But that, that's the main reason why is because we couldn't move in the same direction and now we are. So, uh, but other than that, other than that, like, you know, for the last, for the last year and a half, um, you know, it's been me and my daughter. And uh, I mean, I, I just can't, I just can't describe it. Like, you know, people will oftentimes use their kids as a reason for doing something. They're like, oh, you know, my kid's the reason why I'm doing this. And I'm like, that, that's not fair to that child. You know, Emery's not the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm doing it because I, you know, I know I'm mortal. If I pass away, I know that that passive income is still going to come to her. That's a big reason. But the main reason is because it's what it takes to survive. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. What is going to get all of us through this? It's not just about her. It's about me. It's about my dad. It's about everybody. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't want to put that evil on her. So uh, when I see people talk about their kids, sometimes they're like, man, I can't do this because I got a kid. And I'm like, well, that's, that's BS. That, yeah. Let's just fix that right now. It, you know, you need to do it for your kids. But when I see them say, you know, my kids are my reason why, you know, I'm like, it's got to be bigger than that. It has to be. Yeah. And it, it's, it's awesome because, you know, you've said a couple of things that made me know that you're just a loyal person. You're an ethical person, moral conduct, your codes are, your codes are right. It's not about that, that blingy, flashy things that it could be right it's about who you are as a person and what you're trying to accomplish and achieve on a daily basis so i love that and you're very loyal and i'm glad things are working out now and it's coming back full circle let's talk about what you do as far as you're, you're just a you're a giving guy man what about this mentoring do you mentor people what, what's going on with that? i mentor people all the time uh you know i have i can't like everybody's always charging to be a mentor and I joke around with it because I'm like, look, when my schedule gets busy enough that I can't do it for free, then, then, then there might be a fee, but it's kind of funny because it comes back to you tenfold because I, I there's a guy by the name of Donovan Ruffin, uh, you can on my Facebook, you know, this kid's 21 years old and he's just a beast, right? But beasts recognize other beasts. So the very first time Donnie brought me a deal, it wasn't a deal. Uh, the guy didn't even own it. He was just lost, and I could tell he was lost, and I let him have it. I said, look, man, don't ever call me again unless it's an actual deal and quit with these BS contracts, you know, using correct contracts. So at that point in time, he started calling me. Hey, how do you do this? How do you do that? What would you do here? What would you do there? You know, so 
along the way, I'm, you know, mentoring him and prodding him and pushing him in the right direction and then talking to him about passive income because, you know, he's 21. What's he want to do when he makes money? He wants to go around Lambo and drive around Vegas, which he does all the time, and I'm not hating. I love it for him. But from there, he takes all of the money he's making, and he goes and starts a marketing company, a door-to-door -door marketing company. Now he's making fifty, sixty thousand dollars a month at 22 years old. You know what I mean? And I love it for him. I absolutely love it for him. And, and where he's going to go, the sky's the limit because he's so young and so energetic. But you know, it all started with with a little bit of prodding for me because at the time he was selling Direct TV door to door and he was a beast at it. But he didn't realize how big of an asset that was for him in the real estate world because you're out in the community, you see the vacant houses, you know where they're at. Now here's how you look up the owners. Here's how you find it. And that little bit right there took his business to the next level and it made it to where he could generate hundreds of thousands of dollars a month in real estate because he had it in every neighborhood in Dallas, you know, and then he, he, he next leveled that and started his own company where he has his own people going door to door yep. and he's all of the lead. So it became this beautiful thing, but it's like, you know, I mean, I'm not going to take credit for Donnie's, Donnie's idea, but I mean, it's just a simple conversation that, you know, he's like, you know, he considers me one of his mentors, but I'm like, man, that wasn't, that wasn't mentoring. Yeah. You know, that was just standing back and looking at the situation as a whole and saying, Hey, you could really take advantage of this. Yeah. You, you know what, Corey, you're, you're a genuine guy, man. I, I, I'm, I'm attracted to what you're putting out in the universe. And it's so funny listening to you because you're like an oil guy, right? 30 K a month still can't bite my tongue on that. But at the end of the day, you're, you're sounding really like a real estate guy. Then, man. I mean, 100%. Like, you know, I've, it, the funny thing is I've had opportunity to go back to the 30 K a month and I've turned it down because, you know, the money doesn't matter. I mean, at the end of the day, everybody will say that, you know, it matters. If you're not on par with your purpose. It, now, I can drill an oil well. Don't get me wrong. I, I love it. Like, I love the atmosphere. I'll go out there and work the bottom position right now for one week just to hang out with the guys. You know what I mean? But it's not it's not a problem with my purpose. I, I want to I want to see my daughter wake up every morning. You know what I mean? I want to cook her bacon and eggs every morning. And I can't do that uh, in South Texas on an oil rig. You know what I mean? But if we've got to go down to Corpus or somewhere seven hours away and, and do a real estate class, I can load her up with me. Mm. We can take RV. We can go set it up on the beach. We can spend three or four days down there, have a good time, go fishing, do the things we like to do, and then go teach real estate too and, and, and make the same money ultimately. I love it. Now, yeah, so you, the decision switch, I mean, the purpose is there, the passion is there, and, um, and, and that's what we teach here is, you know, go after, your, go after those things, have your targets for what you really want to do. You're doing it for what you really want to do, the lifestyle that you really want to live, and I'm sure that that's happening for you right now. So where can people find you if they want some more information about what you do, Corey, and how they can learn more? And maybe even invest in some things that you're doing right now. How could they reach? How could they reach you? Facebook is the absolute best way. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. Uh, I, I don't do as much with Instagram as I should. Um, we're going to start building business accounts and growing in that direction. But Facebook is the absolute best way to to, to find me. Um, I'm not maxed out on friends, unfortunately, as much as I try. You know, I'm sending 2,500 friends, but they're all they're all hitters. You know, they're all movers and shakers. So so. You know, find me on Facebook, look me up. Uh, that's the absolute best way to get me. That's where I do most of my business. No, absolutely. And that's going to be in the show notes, ladies and gentlemen. And you have a website here, gbtinvestment.com. Yes, so yes. That, that's viable place for you as well. Yes, that's yeah. that, that, a company website. We funnel traffic to there. We've actually started uh, registering other domain names. I can stop your foreclosure.com is another one. Uh, we're going to start funneling traffic to that with our with our mail marketing and doing some uh, creative uh, SEO stuff the, with the Google AdWords and stuff like that to, to drive more traffic to our websites. I, I mean, look, everything that Grant Cardone has brought into my life as far as connections, we're talking about people that we just reach out to on Facebook like me and you. Yep. You can't put a value on it, right? You can't, I mean, what would you pay for it? You know, you can't, you can't say, I mean, it's, it's, it's unbelievable and and just what we've learned about building a business because i mean 
let's face it, I'm not a businessman by trade. You know what I mean? Uh, entrepreneurial spirit, always had it, always wanted to do something, always wanted to make t-shirts and do all these different things. Now I'm actually taking action on it. You know, this summer I'm going out to a conference called Meltdown in the Desert out in uh, uh, Phoenix, Arizona with a guy named Colby K on Facebook is putting it on. And I'm going out there for one reason. I want to learn how to make t-shirts and sell them on the internet. You know, it's like, and, and Ron Papke is, is me out there and out there and meet these guys and we're going to learn how to make t-shirts. I mean, and that sounds crazy to some people, but I'm like, look, I want to be able to sell funny t-shirts on the internet. That's all. <laughs> Yo, man, you bring, go ahead. I you're bringing me back to a place before before the comfort killers it was preferred classics and that's what we did we made t-shirts i got so good at it that i wrote an ebook called how to sell t-shirts online with no experience you can find it online right now but you're bringing me back to a place man so <laughs> so thank you very much and that's what it's about you want to learn go learn go do it that's it you know and people are like you're doing this in real estate now you're going to go do t-shirts i'm like look if I can make $10,000 selling t-shirts on the internet, I can take that $10,000 and I can turn it into $200 a month forever. You know what I mean? So that's, that's, that's all I want to do. If I can sell a funny t-shirt to anybody on the internet, I want to do it because funny stuff happens all day long. And I feel like I have a pretty good sense of humor. Anybody that follows me on Facebook, you know, some people reach out to me sometimes like, why would you post that? I'm like, I don't know. I, sometimes I forget. <laughs> You're you, man. You're you and, you, and you're comfortable with being you, and you are who you are. So you like hunting, you like fishing, you, you hate RVs, but you drive a lot. Yep, 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 that's it. That's it. That's hey, yo, Corey, you are a comfort killer. I want to know, me personally, I know some people that's going to connect with you based off of what you said with the foreclosures. There's a lot of people in the circle right now for comfort killers that are into real estate and you just opened up one other segment of real estate that I have no idea about. Um, you know, taking the work, helping families out and making a passive income at the same time. So I know that we're definitely going to reach out to you for more information on that. I've had a pleasure of talking and connecting with you. I want to wish you much success. And I know we're going to see that growth online on your Facebook where friends did. And uh, man, you are a comfort killer, man. What's one thing that you're going to do today to get uncomfortable and remain uncomfortable, sir? Today, I'm going to go door knocking. Today, I'm going, I looked up the, the, the pre-foreclosure list yesterday in Waco, Texas, and I actually went into a house that was infested with bees yesterday door knocking, mm -hmm. but I go knock on people's doors who are going through foreclosure and say, hey, here's what I have to offer. And, and this is something that no pe nobody does. Like, I can promise you, nobody, nobody goes door to door saying, hey, I can stop this. I can help you. So that's what I'm going to do today. Uh, we're looking for a particular deal for somebody. And we're going to go knock on all the doors that fit that fit that mold. So uh, that's that's what I'm going to do. I love that. Taking action, both online and offline. And I love that you're adding this online tangible. Give me a mailer because you know what? I toss a bunch in the mail in, in the garbage. But when it's handwritten with a stamp on it, I get kind of sentimental. I, I, I want to open that shit. You know what I mean? So I'm glad that you're adding that value to people. And you're <laughs> that way thank you so much Corey, for being a part of the get uncomfortable podcast show with your host i am stacy a cross and there is no e in my name until next time comfort killer